What were the three moments in the Ohio State game where it could have swung a different way? The crossroads moments of that game. We're going to talk about them. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first of us to match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. Um, I want to just get into it. Um, we're going to do a new segment. We're going to call it The Crossroads, right? It, which is not just a bad Britney Spears movie. Um, we're going to do a new segment. This is the the moments in a game, the, the key moments in a game where it could go either way. Like, the three biggest where I thought if a, a plausible outcome would have happened, not like a crazy outcome, just something that very easily could have happened, this game could have flipped for Wisconsin. So let's get to the first one, second and six, 11-44. Because, again, this was a seven-point game going into the fourth quarter. Listen, Ohio State left points on the field as well. Okay, But from Wisconsin's perspective, here are three moments where it really could have gone the other way. The first one is second and six, 1144 in the first quarter. By the way, I apologize for my voice. It's still kind of recovering. So feels a little weird. That's why second and six, 1144 in the first quarter. We got our first crossroads moment. If you remember, the stadium's getting loud. Wisconsin's defense, Ohio State gets the ball first. Wisconsin's defense gets a big stop. Sacks McCord on fourth down. Our ball, first run to Braylon Allen, positive yardage. Second run, positive yardage. And then he fumbles. What did we talk about all week? We said you can't start slow. You have to be clean in the first quarter. Get a lead. Get the crowd really jazzed up. Get the belief going. Get the momentum going. That was the opportunity right there. <clears throat> right? Because you had the ball in good field position because you turned Ohio State over. You had two good runs from Braylon. You were at the 50-yard line. The crowd was, oh, was hyping up. We were sensing something. This was a moment in the game where you could have gotten off to a good start. You could have ratcheted up the pressure on Ohio State a little bit. You could have made them think a little bit. You could have made them get a little nervous. You could have punched first, right? And I don't think Ohio State folds. It's not that. Ohio State's not going to fold. But it's just different when you're on the road and you go down at night, right? It, 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 everything is just different. So, Braylon, I mean, Braylon just can't fumble it. That uh, That is a part of his game that has cropped up at times, at sometimes in, in big moments. It's cost Wisconsin in big moments. He's a great running back. Um, but he just he has one of the best players on the team, and he'd tell you this. Every coach would tell you this. I'm not breaking any news. You can't, you just cannot put the ball in the carpet there. He's fighting for extra yards. It doesn't, you can do it. Huge, huge moment right there. And then Wisconsin or Ohio State gets that fumble. They come right down, they kick a field goal, and they're up. They're up three nothing. And they never relinquished, relinquished that, or that where Wisconsin never has really an opportunity to take the lead after that. So that's a big one. And right off the gate, uh, the second one, let's go first and goal. That first and goal situation, <clears throat> 43 seconds left in second quarter. Ohio State's up 10 nothing, but Wisconsin has first and goal at the one-yard line. First and goal at the one, 43 seconds. First, well, first play is that, that kind of quick pass to um, – to, um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Skylar Bell. The quick pass is Skylar Bell. He goes down on the knee, catches it, gets in the end zone. We all we all jump around. We think it's a touchdown. It's reviewed. His knee is down. Uh, yeah, like, and then you have the second down Braylon Allen run. He gets stuffed. The third down shovel pass. He gets stuffed. You kick the field goal. Let me start with, I agree with kicking the field goal. I think you need points there. So, but I, I don't like, and I know people will disagree with me. I think probably Coach Anderson on Coach's Corner will probably disagree with me. I know Gardner Fickle disagrees with me. I don't like those play calls. I, I don't – you okay, first and goal to one, if you just get under center and, and run a quarterback sneak, I'm not that I'm, – I'm not trying to second-guess Longo on any – but I'm just saying it feels like there's easier pass to success from the one-yard line to score than trying to throw a quick pass to anybody um, or trying to run a shovel, like a little shovel pass. And by the way, if the offensive line had blocked a little better, that shovel pass scores. Michael Fortney missed a block, missed a key block. Right, his guy got off him, and that's the guy that hit Braylon Allen. If he holds that block, they pro the play probably scores. If Braden Lock throws a better pass, Skyler Bell scores. But at the same token, those plays require more execution. When people say you just have to execute, there are plays that are more difficult to execute, in my opinion. 
that quick pass on on the on the one yard line to to a team who has struggled at times with drops. Um, I, I just feel like that's harder to execute than just going under center or just handing the ball off to Braylon three times. I I would have just liked to be simpler there, a little more a little more power football and. I know there's people who don't like going shotgun in that situation. I kind of agree with that. Maybe that's just the Wisconsin in me. Like you can be power spread, but still occasionally go under center. We saw Ohio State do it. Ohio State runs more of a power spread, but they do go under center. They had two quarterback sneaks for first downs, right? They go under center in certain moments when it's advantageous. I just feel like that's I would I, I that's the one I would not even say criticism. Like um I just think like Longo at times, Coach Longo at times, I shouldn't say Longo, Coach Longo at times, maybe gets a little too cute in short yard situations. I thought we could have scored there. And then you go into halftime 10-7 and you have all the momentum. You get the ball after halftime. Settling for three there felt like, even though you got points, it felt deflating. And I agree, that was the right call. I think Coach Fickle made the right call going there. But you just can't, there's no two ways around it. If you get the ball at the one yard line first and goal, you have to score against Ohio State. You just have to do it. And it felt like these plays could have worked if they had been executed better. But it also felt like the plays we had called in the sequencing, those are more difficult to execute in general. So didn't love it. But again, that's a huge crossroads moment in this game. If it goes the other way, you pick up those seven points. It's 10 to 7 going into halftime, right? <clears throat> um, here's the last one. Here's my third crossroads moment of this game. The last big intersection where it really, if something else had happened, this game really could have flipped. So Wisconsin comes out in the second half, and, and Phil Longo engineered a called a great drive. We marched down the field, score a touchdown. Braden Locke was incredible on this drive. It's 10-10. to 10. Camp Randall is rolling. Part of the reason I don't have a voice now is I was part of that. right? So it was a great moment, a great drive, 10-10. to 10. The screws are tightening, and then you kick the ball off to them. The one thing you can't do is just allow Ohio State to march right back down the field, take a seven-point lead again, and – kind of just take all that energy out, and that's what they did. And credit to Ohio State. That was a big boy drive, right? That's a response drive. But this is that crossroads, right? If they're, if you kick it to them and you can get a three and out or just give up a first down, get the ball right back, right back to your offense that just started getting rolling, had just scored 10 straight points, had two pretty good drives against Ohio State. And instead, you know, Ohio State hits a 16-yarder to Marvin Harrison. They get a 25-yard run in there with um, Henderson. And they score a touchdown, and it, they did it pretty easily. It felt like they kind of stepped up to that moment. They took it, and they – and then, you know, again, like these are big moments in these games. If you can get a stop there, you get the ball back. If you can score that touchdown first and goal, you know, if you don't fumble on that first drive. Again, Ohio State has those two, but those to me were the three big turning points of this game where if you could have just done something a little differently in those moments, and not – those aren't even unrealistic things – the game script changes. So we're coming up. We're going to talk about my, the, a lot of people pushing back on my just general thought of, I said moral victory, but it's in the sense of let's, there is progress made here. And I want to, I want to push back a little bit on why people hate the term moral victory so much. And we're going to talk about that. Plus a bunch of your comments coming up on locked on Badgers. But first today's episode is brought to you by um, the, the game changer of the week. And you know, we talk a lot about um, defense and, and and Hunter Wohler and all of this here. But really, to me, the, the game changer of the week was was Ricardo Holman. He's a guy we haven't used yet. Ricardo Holman was awesome in this game, had an incredible pick, jumped a pass. And just like Ricardo Holman, the game changer of the non-alcoholic beer game is Athletic Brewing. They are incredible. Um, they have done this in what I would thought was an impossible task because I love beer. They've made beer. Non-alcoholic tastes really good. Over 50 different varieties, sours, IPAs, goldens, and goldens. I'm on a big golden kick lately. So Athletic Brewing is there for all your types of varieties, all your types of flavors. And you can do it whenever you want to. Um, well, maybe not whenever, but mowing the lawn, right? Playing racquetball, going to play chess at the local park. All of it. Near beer, our Athletic Brewing is here to, to really be an everyday, all the time type of beverage that you can enjoy and not have the hangovers, not have the after effects that beer just has. Uh, you can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First time customers use code Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's code Locked On at checkout for 15% off athleticbrewing.com. Near beer conditions, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company fit for all times. 
Today's episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. That's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle, level it up to peak performance, superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and for me, all the other parts, right? Because my car, I drive, I went home, we went to, obviously went to Madison's weekend, I got a car rental and it was this incredibly nice Jeep Grand Cherokee 2023, like 6,000 miles, fully loaded. It was awesome. And it's such an opposite from my normal cars because you don't need eBay Motors for a 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee out of, off the lot as much as you do for my 2011 Jeep Compass that has been through the rigors. And that's why I need eBay. I need eBay Motors because they are there with over 122 million parts for all of my cars. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. eBay guaranteed fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right. Let's 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 continue on with this conversation about moral victory, not moral victory. I, I mentioned in a previous show, I even maybe even titled it Moral Victory Question Mark. And I got lots of comments, right? Um, and it wasn't really intentional. Like this is from Diavolos, Moral Victory, ROFL, like rolling on the floor laughing. Um this is from user. We are not here for moral victories. We are not Illinois. We expect wins. And by the way, I thank you for both those comments. Um, the definition of moral victory, this is from Collins Dictionary. It, it means even though you have officially lost um, a contest or dispute, you have succeeded in showing that you are right about something. I mean, we're saying the same, like for all the comments, I had so many comments before the show that said 42 to 7, 35 to 3. I don't think Wisconsin's going to score, right? It's going to be a bloodshed, bloodbath, sorry. And I said, I bet you they play better than than what a lot. I, I think it's going to be. I actually called 24-10. I said, we're going to look like we we belong in the field to some degree, and that's progress. Like, I, I get the idea that people don't like the term moral victory. I completely understand that. We're not cheering for losses. It's not okay to continue losing. But this is – there's also just reality. This is year one of Luke Fickle. <clears throat> Ohio State's better. They're just better. They're better all over the board, right? They have coaching continuity. They've recruited better. They're just better. Like, going from some of the recent games we've had against Ohio State to this, that's progress. Now, maybe you don't want to call that a moral victory, but it's basically the definition of a moral victory. If, if you're going to acknowledge progress, that's basically the definition of a moral victory. It's not, it's not okay if that's the case for the next four years. Right. This is a step. It's a bit of progress. And again, I completely am cool with anybody who disagrees with me. They say, no, it's wins or losses. I don't care about anything else. I'm cool with that perspective. A hundred percent. Like I, I'm just not quite there. I, I think there has to be notches in the belt before you, you get to a certain spot. And this is made hopefully a little notch in the belt that tightens it up a little bit. And next year you make another notch. You're not going to catch Ohio State in a year. So can you can you make it a bit of an ugly game with them? Well, they did that this year. Right, they did that this year. They made it a bit of an ugly game. It was a seven-point game going to the fourth quarter. That's progress. Now, if you don't want to call it, if you want to play, you know, semantics and say, "Well, I'm, I don't want to say moral victory," but moral victory is, is another word for just progress, right? So, I don't know. I think it's interesting to me that a lot of people hate that word so much, but it, they'll say that they're happy with how the team looked despite the loss. It's it's kind of it's shades of gray, is all I'll say there. Uh, this one's from, he said, I'm an OSU fan. It's funny that you said there were not many holds getting called. We thought the same thing with the OSU defensive line. This is a true thing, and let's, we're all guilty of this. We see the penalties against our team not called, obviously, far more than the penalties not called against the other team. There's never there's never been a game in the history of college football where all the missed calls went against one team, except for maybe that Lakers, Sacramento Kings, Western Conference Finals from many years back. But um, – yeah, listen, obviously referees blew calls on both sides. We saw some egregious ones that we thought should have been called. It doesn't it, – at the end of the day, Ohio State's a lot better. Those calls did not determine the game. So, yeah, I'm sure there were missed calls against Ohio State as well. He also says, I like your young quarterback. Yeah, we like him too. We like we like him too. Um, this is from Solar Giuseppe. Badgers showed that if they can somehow win the Big Ten West, face OSU in the Big Ten championship game, they will not get embarrassed. Could possibly even win if they get PA back. Solar, I love your optimism here. Um, this that is not the take I took out of this game. I don't I don't think 
I, I don't think going to face him at a neutral site game is going to go any, any better than what we just saw in Madison. In fact, it could be a little worse because McCord will probably play cleaner. Maybe they get a, a, Buka, a Buka back. Um, I don't – I, I understand what you're saying. Like Wisconsin did make this a game, and they made it a game without Braylon Allen for half of it. I, I think that's a completely fair point. But this was also a game where Wisconsin won the turnover battle by two. So I don't know if you can count on that in Indy. Um, there's going to be a lot more Ohio State fans in Indy. So it's not my take, but I love the optimism. Uh, and I'm, listen, I'm here for it. I'm here. If they get to the Big Ten title game, I'll I'll be cheering along for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Dimitri says, not sure if you can comment on this in your next video, but it seems like many times in our zones, we never even covered Harrison Jr. And the times we, we did run with them, we were able to cover him. He went on to say um, we were able to make some plays on the ball when you we were in coverage. I would say it was more – it felt just more like Rico Hallman did that. Like we had uh, Forkren on him the one time down the and, – and had no chance, got the touchdown against Forkren. It's he's at the zone thing. He's so good that sometimes when he seems, I you can watch this. Sometimes when Marvin Harrison Jr. seems like, oh my gosh, why is nobody covering him? You know, one time was a pick play. He's running that crossing pattern. The same thing they did against Penn State. He did against us. It, it wasn't that we weren't covering him. We just got picked off um, on one of the zones. He's so threatening deep that you can almost see defensive backs fail, and then he he puts on the brakes, comes back, and it looks like he's five ten yards open. It's because he's a terrifying force of nature right and he puts so much stress on defensive backs so i i agree with you i thought our zones were a little loose at times i do agree with that point i think rico did as well a job on him when we was covering him as you could but there is no magic bullet for marvin harrison jr zone man bracket he's just a beast uh robert says laser lock dude was whipping it fun game to watch glad we had a chance lock was interesting this game he, he was very interesting i thought the accuracy was a little weird for, from from um, Braden Locke. And if we want to crush the receivers for dropping passes, I think some of that's fair, by the way. I, I don't think the receivers had a good game. Locke, as he progresses, I don't think – I'm not – listen, he's started two games, so and this was against Ohio State. But Locke, as he progresses, is going to have to make those catches easier too. The he, There is a component of quarterback accuracy that obviously impacts drops and catches. And Locke, this wasn't Locke's best game in that aspect. Again, I put more of it on the receivers, right? They're, they're – they played a lot more football than Locke has. Uh, and quite frankly, if the, the ball hits you on the hands, I, I kind of need you to catch it as a D1 receiver. But Locke's going to have to get more accurate too. But, yeah, he was whipping it around. He's pretty fearless. I, I like Braden Locke. I've liked Braden Locke since he committed. Like I, He was a guy that I, I was pretty early on saying, like, this guy's going to play probably. Like, this guy shouldn't be overlooked. A lot of people were higher on Evers. Locke was always more a little bit more of my guy. So, um yeah, I like Locke a lot. I thought he's, again, fearless. The accuracy is going to have to get a little better. This is from uh, MB Anderson. Locke and the defense played good enough to win. Receivers have to catch the ball. Need a legit center. That's where I'm at. I don't know if – the Locke thing's weird. I, I don't know if I'd say he played good enough to win. Again, I don't put that on him. He had a lot of drops, and he's a young quarterback playing a really good defense. But he 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 didn't turn – he also did not turn the ball over. Um, receivers have to catch the ball. Receivers have to catch the ball. We talked about it all year. They, they weren't making plays for Tanner Mordecai consistently. They're not pay, making plays for Tanner Locke. There was drops from Green, Pauling. Um, Sky had several. There was there was a Bryce, yeah, I said Bryson Green. Tucker Ashcraft had one that he could have dropped um, or could have caught that was a drop. It was a tough catch, but, yeah, I agree. The, the playmakers have to make plays, right? They have to make plays, and we haven't seen it consistently. And I said this two or three weeks ago. I said you're not going to see it consistently because this is who we are, Right. This is who we are. So you're going to see more like you're it's unfortunate, but you're going to see more drops this year. That that's just kind of who we are offensively. Uh, David said it was nice. Oh, I missed David. Sorry. My bad. There it is. Honestly, it was nice to see uh, UW belonged on the field with Iowa state. Thank you, by the way, for all the comments from everybody. You guys are amazing. And I definitely always want to get these comments in. He said, honestly, it was nice to look uh, like UW belonged on the field with Iowa state. While Ohio state's O isn't quite as good as last year. Their D is fantastic. That is from David. Yes, that that's really – and it's a great point, David. This is really the crux of what I was saying is I, you have to walk before you run, right? You have to dig a hole before you plant a tree. You have to – there's steps to this stuff, right? Um, we there, Especially last year, it was 52 to 21. It looked like we didn't belong. The game – and the game wasn't even that close. We looked like a JV team. This game, we didn't look like we didn't belong on the field. We just looked like we have work to do. That's a step. It's not enough. 
<laughs> in three years, if we're saying the same thing, it's not going to be good enough. But it's a it's a step in year one. All right, a bunch more comments coming up, um, including uh, Braylon Allen. Which offense is worse, Iowa's or Wisconsin's? That's that's I don't get that comment, but we're going to talk about it. That's coming up next on Locked On Badgers. But first. A quick break for our friends of the show over at Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks? Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and it is the largest for a reason. Simple, easy, in and out in under 60 seconds. And you're not competing with thousands of other dudes out there, you know, with all their data, all their, excuse me, all their time, clickety clackety on their keyboard. No, no, no. All you're going to do is you're going to pick between two and six players. If you think a player is going to have more than 100 rushing yards or whatever the number is for a player, you click more. If you think he's going to have less, you click less. You do that for two to six players and you watch the money roll in if you win. No more competing with all these crazy players from all over the world who have way more time and access to data than you have. Just you against the stats. And this lockdown Badgers community is going to win that. This is a sharp community. So that's as simple as it can be. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown college. Use Code Lockdown College for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Lockdown College. Use code Lockdown College for a free deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, let's keep our comments going here. Definitely want to keep, um, really just keep, one of the big things we always do in the show is get your thoughts into it. I think that's why uh, the show has been successful because the community drives it. And um, I'm just humbled to be part of that community along with everybody else. Phil Stamper says, stop blaming the refs. They blow bad calls in every game. I'm not. I don't know where. Here's the thing. I don't. I will call out a ref. I have never blamed a ref for a loss, ever. I, I, I think basically ever. Like, the refs did not, co- did not cause this loss for Wisconsin. Okay? Like, our, our third down conversions on offense, our inability to score from the one, our inability to stop their outside running game, the, the, our inability to cover Marvin Harrison Jr., which everyone shares that inability, by the way. But I'm, I can also sit here and say they missed a blatant pass interference in a huge situation that would have given Wisconsin a first down in a one-possession game in the fourth quarter. Like, that matters, right? Like, we can be honest here. It's like saying um, if, if a receiver drops a pass, it doesn't mean he, he blew the game, but we can point out that that might have been a big drop. So Phil Stamper also wonders whose offense is worse, Iowa's or Wisconsin's. Iowa's is way worse. I mean, that's not even a question. Uh, Bo Dragon says Locke is the man, just like I said, back of running back in all can good could get stuffed and fumbled just as good as Allen. Defense played their asses off, uh, trending up. Yeah, but listen, listen, Bo's been all over Braden Locke. Uh, he's been excited to see him, so I know he's excited to see that. Uh, there's no running back depth. So when you start saying, first of all, Jackson, a- let's just say Jackson Edgar is not as good as Braylon Allen. He, he isn't going when you're saying he gets stuffed or fumbled just as good as Allen. Jackson is not the running back Braylon Allen is. I mean, we, you see it in this game, the, the difference in some of the runs before and after Braylon. But that being said, Braylon can't fumble the ball. Like, uh, Jackson, that's one thing Jackson's done. He's took, taking care of the ball, and that's a real thing. Michael R. says, great fight from the Badgers, was there and had a great time. There we go, Michael. One of you mentioned at the beginning of the year how special teams may cost us in a big game, and I think here's the game. Listen, the punting was killing me. How many, how many times this year, guys, have – Guys and gals, have we started at the five-yard line um, in the Iowa game? In this game, it just felt like we were constantly, and that that was their punter was pinning us, and we had opportunities to pin them. We had opportunities to pin Ohio State in big moments, and instead of being able to pin them at the five like teams do to us, we pin them at the 13 or at the 14, right? Those punts have to be better. Those punts have to be better. Um I don't know where else special teams really killed us. Uh, you you would like Vacos to hit that first field goal, but 54. I'm never going to kill a, a college kicker from, from missing for 54. He had enough leg, but that's a tough one. Um, he hit the chip shot later in the game. Obviously, you kicked it out of bounds again. That's like a Wisconsin tradition at this point. It's cheese curds, uh, lineys, and kicking the ball out of bounds. But – you got to be able to flip field position, right? That's a big part of your punting game, and that's something that we weren't able to do in this game, uh, certainly not sick as well as Ohio State did. So you're not going to beat – here's the thing, too. You're not going to beat Ohio State if they're also doing the little things like pinning you when you're not pinning them, right? If you're kicking it out of bounds, if you're – so many little moments in this game where Wisconsin could have been a little cleaner, you have to clean – you have to be really clean in all those moments when you're the lesser talented team, and they just were not able to do it. Uh, high power habits say missed calls happen on both sides. Your bias just doesn't allow you to see the missed holding calls that your team benefits from. Yeah, that's 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 true. 
Like Saint Louis fans are biased. That, that that's not that's not incorrect. Um, Zinter says the pass interference was a good no call. Stop it. That's an Ohio State fan. Uh, the t- the TV showed both hand fighting and the receivers also stiff farming. Oh, stop it. That stop it. That was a pass interference call. It's an egregious miss. Get out of here, Zinter. Let's, let's see. Um, bottom line, when the team needs one yard, Braylon Allen can't get one yard. And the shuffle shovel pass was a terrible call. Listen, I, I talked about the shovel pass. I didn't like the play calling. And Braylon Allen can get a yard. He got hit right away. Like uh, on that shovel pass, he got hit right away. I, I don't like running out of shotgun in that situation. Uh, I know there's another comment here. This is from Commandant. I hate the shotgun formation on short yardage downs. For one, it takes the element of the quarterback sneak out of the, out of the equation. Uh, but number two, I like for the running back who has the ball to be able to get some momentum going forward on first down, not waiting for a snap to come back to the quarterback, and then the quarterback has to give it to him. I, I agree with this. I think Commandant has a point here. I like – I like my ideal Longo offense is everything Longo does. And then on third and one, fourth and one, you go under center and you, you're able to play a little more power football. Ohio State does this. Now, to Longo's credit, Longo has done this at times this year. He has gone under center. And we've had a, a plethora of weird false starts in those situations. And so it's not like Longo won't do that. I, I would like us to be more consistent in it. And maybe it is it is an execution thing where next year they'll do it more. I hope so. Because I think you're better – Especially in like on the one yard line, I, I'm here's the thing: nobody's stopping four straight quarterback sneaks from the one yard line. I, I just don't believe that happens almost ever at, at the college level, and that's kind of where I'm at. A lot, a lad, a dad, a, a lad. Sorry, says sorry guys. There are no moral victories in FBS football. You have wins and losses. Period. As a fan, I am encouraged by the fact it was a good effort and not an embarrassing blowout. Isn't that a moral victory? Like, um, Aled, I mean, maybe I'm misinterpreting what you're saying. And again, I appreciate the comment. You're saying all you care about is wins and losses, period. No moral victories. But then you went on to say you're encouraged by the fact that it was a good effort and not an embarrassing blowout. See, to me, that feels like the same thing as a moral victory. That feels like what I was saying at the beginning, right? Like, I, I'm not, I, I, I think that the, just the word moral victory people hate. They hate that term. But underneath it, like when you pop the hood of moral victory, what it is, is you're encouraged by what you saw. Even though you lost, you're encouraged. That That is a moral victory. I feel like we're saying the same thing. You just don't like the word moral victory, which I get. It has a bad connotation. Um, this is from 49 Braun. OSU probably recruited 25 stars in the same time we didn't even have a recruiting office. We played very good. Um, we aren't in their class yet. That's 100% correct, 49 Braun. 100% correct. Downstream V said, I think we lose to Nebraska and we win the rest. Nebraska goes to the title game. That would be wild. Matt Rule in his first year to get them to the title game. Do you know how well they would travel? First of all, Nebraska would travel so well to that game only to lose 49 to like seven. It would be brutal for them. But given the dearth of success they've had, they they would pack that stadium. It would be hilarious low key to see them then lose 56 to, excuse me, three. Um, Scotty T says, by the way, I don't – I could see – sorry, to go back to the point downstream, thank you for your comment. I could see us losing to Nebraska too. I could see us losing to Nebraska or Indiana. I, I could see both those happening. Um, Scotty T says it's hard when you're missing quarterback one, running back one, running back one A, receiver one. Yeah. Now, here's why I want to put this comment up. So, yes, all these injuries are true, but this is the difference between recruiting entire teams full of really good players and not being able to recruit at that level. Ohio State could miss all that, and they'd have the depth to still win. Right. They beat Penn State last week without running back one, receiver two. Uh, at the end of the day, you need more depth. You need to recruit better because you're going to have injuries throughout the year. Hopefully it's not to quarterback one, running back one, running back one, a, et cetera, et cetera. But let's be honest. It's not like Tim Ray DK wins this game. It's not like we win this game if, if Tanner Mordecai is playing. Um, maybe if Braylon and Chez are playing, you punch it in there and it gets a little closer. But you need depth. You need the depth to do it. Um, this one's from Michael. He said, Rajiv and Ryan, and he used quotes, we could never be as good as Ohio State. 14-point losses to good teams or wins. We will never be great. What a loser's mentality. These two are a joke. Like, first, no, nobody ever said that, Michael. Like, you're using quotes and infer- inferring what we've said. I've never said we can never be as good as Ohio State. I've never said 14-point losses to good teams are, are wins. I've never said we'll never be great. So, 
I don't know, take your negativity, man, and, and put it somewhere else. Because, I mean, we haven't said that. We just haven't said that. If you want to have a discussion, put an actual quote up. Uh, Steve Mitchell says, problem with Ben but don't break is you get the ball on the punt. Yeah, so here it is. Problem with Ben but don't break defense is you get the ball on the punt inside the 10-yard line a lot. We definitely played better. We'll have to have better talent next year. Yeah, I mean, you're right. The problem is here consistently bending and not breaking. Your field position is always going to be skewed. But that's the best you can do against Ohio State with this version of Wisconsin's defense, right? It's not like they want to play bend but don't break. They want to play just stone cold. Them. They want to play three and out. But you can't. You're not talented enough this year to do that. So bend but don't break is the best you can do. For the most part, they did it. So I hear you. They do need better talent for sure. Uh, but they did play hard. Uh, there was things to be encouraged there. And Steve, thank you for the comment. With that, we're going to wrap it up on Wisconsin. Y'all are amazing. Bunch more good content coming up this week, I promise you. Hopefully my voice gets a little bit better. Thank you again to everybody who we were able to connect with um, this last weekend in Madison. It was incredible and awesome. You're incredible and awesome on Wisconsin, and we'll talk later.